Hey everybody, welcome to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, visionrecordingstudios.com, and here on my YouTube channel. And this week, just do a quick, short <laughs> video on um, something that, you know, everyone's already put out already, but I get a lot of subscribers asking me, so I'll just go ahead and I'll do it. And that is the new version of, obviously, PreSona Studio One version 3.2 has been released about a week or so ago. And everybody's putting up all these videos all over YouTube on what the new enhancements are, so on and so forth. And um, I'm not going to go through all of them, but I want to just show you maybe five or six things that I found to be helpful improvements. Um, some of this will be redundant to other channels you might be watching, but people have asked, my subscribers have asked for my opinion, so I'm going to give it to you. And I'm going to show you some something that is kind of cool that I haven't seen in any other video. So let's, um, let's just take a look. So here's the, the six things that I like, and I'm sure there's a lot more um, involved in 3.2, but the six things that I found helpful and that I use in my daily workflow. So the very first uh, thing here is um, when you have a MIDI track like we do down here, we have just a, a simple MIDI uh, track here of uh, just some piano. Okay, now we all know in Studio One, it's, it was always easy just to convert this to an audio track if you wanted to do that. And you can either create a macro and you can do that, which I've done, or you can highlight the event and you can right click and you can do all that stuff. But now what you can do is if you have an audio track right underneath it that you create, you can just simply highlight the events, these three MIDI events, and you can just left click and drag down to the audio track and it will automatically convert it to an audio track. So it's just a little bit faster way to render from MIDI to audio, which is kind of cool. Um, again, you could always do it fairly easy in Studio One, easier than in any other DAW I've ever used, at least in my experience, especially Pro Tools. But this just makes it a little bit easier. So now here you go. You can see that this audio track, or this MIDI track is now audio, right? Cool. And it still preserves the MIDI data in there, so the instrument is still there. And there's ways that you can, uh, you know, you can uh, convert MIDI to audio and get rid of the instrument track, so on and so forth, but this still preserves the MIDI. So that's pretty cool. So that's one thing that I just found. This is a little bit of an enhancement, which is kind of nice. So I'm just going to remove these from the session. Okay. The second thing, let's open up our mixer view here, extended view. The, next, the second thing, which a lot of people are talking about, which is, it, it is a cool thing, is the addition of VCA faders. So if you want to know what a VCA fader is, it's quite simple. It's a way to remote control a group of tracks um, from one fader. So, for example, here's our drum tracks all down here in brown. If we were to highlight the first track, hold our shift, and click on the last track, it will temporarily group them, and you could always do this, and you can take one fader and move them all together if you wanted to, or you can do a command, or I think it's a control, a G, to group them temporarily if you wanted to, or now you can use VCA faders. So if you highlight all the tracks, and you right-click, and you can choose Add VCA Fader for Selected Channels, and that'll give you a fader with a red cap on it. And what that is now is a remote control for all of our drum tracks, okay? And certain people will say, well, just can't you just route all your drums to a bus, which I do all the time. And you can see this down here. I do have a bus uh, track. Um, and you can say, sure, you can route them all. But the difference is, let me just slide this over here so we can see them side by side. The difference between a, a VCA fader and a just a regular group channel or a bus, is that the bus will, yes, it will change the volume of the drums going into the bus if it's all the drum tracks, if they're routed there, but it only changes the overall volume going into that bus. It doesn't, it doesn't move or control the actual faders on the individual channels where the VCA does. So that is quite helpful. So then what you can do is you can create VCA faders for your groupings of instruments. And you can have, um, you know, maybe five or six or seven VCA faders that can control an entire mix that may have 30 or 40 individual tracks, if that makes sense. So VCAs are something that have been around in Pro Tools and, and many other DAWs for a long time. And, and everyone has been after, um, you know, PreSonas to, to come up with the VCA fader, and they did so. And I think it's great because people that are trying to convert, especially from Pro Tools, um, which is where up until recent times, the majority of, you know, people were using Pro Tools. That was the market share, you know, the lion's share of the market was using Pro Tools. And now people are, you know, looking for features that will uh, make them feel more comfortable um, if you will, to move over to Studio One. And one of those things is VCA faders. Okay, so that's a great addition as well. And if you have never used them before, I urge you to try them. I think once you start using VCAs, um, you won't go back. You'll find it's very convenient. And as you can see, it not only will it control them all, but it controls the volume of the faders in relationship to each other. So if you can see over here on the far, on the far um, left here, the kick drum, you can still individually change the faders. And if I do that here, 
you'll see that when I move the VCA, it keeps the volume, it, it, it controls them, but keeps them all in relationship to each other, if that makes sense. So in other words, you're still going to have the same amount of volume increase from the kick to the snare as I do here when moving the VCA. It keeps them all cohesive and they move in relationship to each other. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And you can still just highlight a track and you can still lower that, oops, that volume on an individual track if you'd like. So that's VCA faders. The next thing that I like, um, which is cool, which a lot of people are talking about, again, another uh, Pro Tools-ish feature is everyone, anyone that knows Pro Tools, you knows about the smart tool. And up until this version 3.2, we didn't have a smart tool kind of a thing, but now we do. And I think they call it the arrow tool. I forget what they call it, arrow tool. Where now, if you um, work on an event, depending on where your cursor is in the event will depend on the tool changing. So if you're in the lower section of the um, of an event, it will still be your arrow tool, okay? If you move towards the upper, you can see it changes to the range tool, okay? And if I bring it down to the lower, it goes back to the arrow tool. And then you can still grab your, you can see when you move over towards the end of an event, it turns into this little, um, what I don't know what the exact word for it is, but the little uh, triangles on both sides where you can take it and you can size the events, okay? You can still grab the fate, you can still grab the, um, I can't grab it here, I can't see it. Uh, there we go, you can still grab it here and you can move it, okay? So that is pretty cool. Now you could turn that off if you want to. I mean, that's by highlighting these three um, up here. You can still turn that off if you want to. You can just use it as, as it always was. But I think once you use a smart tool or something like a smart tool, um, you're going to find it's extremely handy because you don't have to use any of your hotkeys. You don't have to switch back and forth, you know, from uh, one to two to three, the blade tool four. You could do everything just by moving your mouse on the event in a different location, and that's going to change the way the tool is going to behave. So that's really cool. Again, another Pro Tool-esque feature uh, that works really well in Studio One. Okay. The other thing I want to show you too is our, the way you can automate now um, a little bit easier. I really like this a lot. I found this very useful. So if I open up, let's say here's our vocal track. And if I open up um, the volume automation here, let me just show you this. So now with the smart tool, again, if you go towards the top of the event, it turns into the range tool. Let's say, let me expand this a little bit so you can see it better. Let's say I just want to change the volume of this section here. It's a little too loud. I can just use my range tool. Okay, and I can highlight it and then I can come over here and if you see it, it picks up, if you move above the volume automation line, you see where it says trim, you can just left click and you can just drag the volume down, in this case 13.8 dB. Very cool, right? So let's say this passage is fine, but now I get over to this passage and again, it's a little loud. Again, I can just go to my range tool, which again is all part of the smart arrow tool. I can just highlight, I can just come over to here and I can just bring it down. Okay, and if I don't like uh, this is too loud here, I can do the same thing. You get the idea. Okay, now I have three points of automation. See how quick that is? Now let's say I wanted to move, now let's say I turn those down, um, but I but let's say, for example, I turned them down the same amount of volume, but you know what, now they're all a little too quiet. I can either go over and I can change them one at a time and bring them up, or what you can do is you can highlight all of these that you just did, okay? And then you can just control them all together which is really cool. So again, it's something that you could have always done in Studio One, as far as you can go in and automate, but this just makes it a lot faster. And with the with the, the inclusion of the, of the Smart Arrow tool here, or the Arrow tool, it makes it a lot faster, which is really cool. So I'm just gonna do a Command Z and get rid of all of that. So that's another uh, enhancement, if you will, that's pretty cool, okay? So now let's take a look. So the last thing I want, well, the other thing I wanna show you, and I talked about this in another video, we talked about this, already. This is cool. And I haven't played with this a lot yet, but I, I urge you to take a look as they added what is known on buses, on your, on your buses and on your, um, <clears throat> on your main outs, the mix effects and the console shaper. We talked about this in another video where this goes in and really it's like the first plugin you put in on your buses and on your outs and it goes into the audio engine and it kind of emulates, um, you know, an analog console. And this is really cool. There's lots of videos online you can go check out. And I did a video comparing this to the Slate Digital VCC a little bit to show you how to use it. But it's a, it's a, it's a great, great attempt from PreSonus to have a plugin that now um, goes into the audio engine of your raw tracks and actually emulates them going through some analog hardware. And it really does a great job. And I think it's an awesome addition. And from what I understand, this is just, I don't know exactly what console this was emulating. I've heard some rumors, but we'll just, we'll just, we'll just leave it at that. 
but apparently in the future they're going to have other console shapers that are going to emulate other types of desks and hardware, which is really cool, much like the VCC by Slate Digital, okay? So that's really, really a neat thing, and it's probably the first... Uh, you know, DAW um, that I've seen that comes with a stock plug-in such as this. There's been other, you know, attempts and other DAWs to do something similar, but I think this does the best job and it's the most authentic and, um, and I really like the way it sounds. I'm going to be using this more and more to familiarize myself more with it. So this is really cool. So I urge you to try that. And again, this comes free with, uh, with the three, with the 3.2 upgrade. If you have Sturdio One Pro, 3.2 was a free upgrade. Um, you know, so they get this for nothing. There's no extra thing to buy. There's no extra cost involved, which is really nice. Okay, so that, let's just take that off here. Uh, okay, so now, there we go. So now the last thing I want to show you, which again, I don't even know if this is an enhancement. I stumbled upon this. I haven't seen anyone else talk about this. And again, it's, it's a little thing I find kind of cool. One thing that was great about version 3 even before 3.2, is in professional, you had the gain reduction meter right on the meter itself, right on the meter. You could see a gain reduction meter to see what kind of compression you would have on your tracks quickly as you were looking down your, your console. So let me, um, let me shut off this one here. Let me put a PreSonus compressor on here and show you that quickly, if you haven't already seen this. So this is just a handy visual that allows you so here's our PreSonus compressor. So let me just uh, dial this in quick, get some compression. Okay, right here. So you can see that gain reduction meter happening when you're using a PreSonus plugin. That was a really cool uh, enhancement to give you a visual cue as you're looking down your console. You can see what tracks have gain reduction and about how much gain reduction you have dialed in. And as the mix gets larger and the project gets larger, that's very helpful. But with version 3, it only worked with PreSonus plugins. It didn't work with third-party plugins. One thing I noticed with 3.2, and I'm not even sure why this is, but I figured I'd just share it, is when you use Waves plugins, I've noticed, and we shut off the PreSonus compressor, turn on the CLA-76. As a matter of fact, I will remove the, wave, the PreSonus plugin. So all I have on this vocal track now is a virtual tape machine, again, a Slate Digital product, a Slate Digital product, and now the Waves CLA-76. And what I noticed is you get that same reduction meter. Check it out. So again, it's really helpful to have that even if you're not using a stock compressor and it only works with waves. I've tried it with universal audio plugins. It doesn't work. I've tried it with um, a Slate Digital compressor. It doesn't work. It only seems to work with waves, at least the plugins that I own. Maybe there's other plugins that are out there that it works. I'm not even quite sure why it works with waves. It doesn't work with the other ones. I don't fully understand it. Maybe someone a lot more educated and hip than me can explain it to me in the comment section below. But I thought that was pretty cool that you actually can now have gain reduction um, no matter what plugin you use. So it would be really cool if you had, um, you used, if that was the case with all the plugins. So I'm not really too sure about that. Again, maybe someone can educate me, but I thought that was really cool as well. So those are the six things that, you know, immediately came to mind for me that helped me with my workflow and some of the enhancements that I thought were pretty cool about version 3.2, the upgrade. And again, that is a free upgrade if you already own PreSonus Studio One. So again, what I love about PreSonus and Studio One, and no, they're not paying me to say this, okay? So everyone that's thinking that, get that out of your mind, um, is that, um, you know, it's coming from Pro Tools for many, many years and probably over a decade of using Pro Tools and using Cubase as well. Cubase was a good product before Studio One came along as well. I left Pro Tools to go to Cubase. Okay, and Cubase wasn't a bad product either. It was a step up from Pro Tools in my mind back in the Cubase 5, Cubase 7 days, and now they have Cubase 8 Pro. But I got to tell you that Studio One and PreSonus, I mean, they really are trying to really listen to the user community and listen to the to the folks that still have not made the change to Studio One because, you know, it's a scary thing. If you're a Pro Tools user or any other DAW for that matter, and you've been using it for a decade, it is not easy to make that change over to New Dawn. Anyone that's done this, you know, conversion um, knows. I mean, I've talked to a lot of people that, uh, you know, that are good friends of mine that you all well, anyone watching this channel uh, knows in the, in the, in the PreSonus community here on YouTube, 
And a lot of us were running Pro Tools and Studio One side by side for probably a good six months when Studio One first came around in version two, two, five, before we would make the jump. Um, and by the time Studio One got to version three, I think they've pretty much have bridged the gap. And now with now what they're doing with three, two, and I'm sure other future updates is they're really trying to look at what features do the, do the folks that used Pro Tools and these other DAWs that, that are still not comfortable with switching, what do they need? And they're incorporating it into the DAW, okay? VCA faders. That didn't come by mistake. That became because they're listening to the top people in the industry who are Pro Tools, you know, disciples and saying, what is it going to take to get you to move over to Studio One? Why don't you move over to Studio One? What's the fear factor? And there's some features that were in Pro Tools that just weren't in Studio One yet. And they've incorporated VCA faders. They incorporated a smart tool type of a thing. Those are huge, right? They're incorporating these things. They're trying to make the editing and the automation easier. They're trying to listen to the to the community and build it into their product. And again, you don't see that from a lot of the other companies in the DAW world. You don't see that in a lot of companies, period. So, you know, hats off to PreSonus for really, really trying to make every upgrade, every small update, every major upgrade a quantum leap forward to get people to get on board because once you use studio one um you know and i tell this to my students all the time and i have a lot of students that are not studio one users <laughs> a lot of them are still pro tools users and i tell them all the time you know once you make that jump and you work in studio one for a week you're going to see the power the workflow enhancement you're really going to enjoy it and see how clunky Pro Tools really is. Now, that's not to say Pro Tools hasn't done an amazing, they were the first ones to the market. They, they took the digital recording into, into, the, in, into the mainstream. And back in the day, they were the innovators. And I think a lot of people would agree that, you know, they haven't been the innovators, you know, as of recent years. And it's companies like Studio One or PreSonus that, that are. And I think it's a wonderful product. So again, I'm going to get off my soapbox here. But um, again, this is just a, a, a few short features that are, you know, small, but are huge. You know, they're, they're really trying to make this DAW the, the, the thing that's really going to be the staple. And I think they're doing a great job. And I look forward to as they're continuing, continuing to upgrade and um, working with PreSonus on certain projects with Made Easy and stuff like that. Uh, I really got to know a lot of the folks over there and people that are involved in the community. And I can tell you that they do listen. I can tell you that they do want their users input. And I can tell you that they really do try to, to make this the best DAW that that's ever been developed. Um, and I think they're on their way to doing that. I really do. And I encourage you, if you're not a PreSonus Studio One user and you're still afraid to make the jump, go demo the freaking thing. <laughs> you're going to love it. And go over to the user community on PreSonus.com. Go over to the forums and post and, and get involved. You'll see the community is something that I've never seen before. The most helpful people, the nicest people. So anyhow, um, no, this is not a sales pitch. I just wanted to show you because some people have asked me, what do I like about 3.2? Well, there's six things I love about 3.2. And again, my, my pitch to, if you haven't moved over, try to move over. So anyhow, for more tips, tips, training, concepts, techniques around everything home recording, head out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And if you'd like some more information about my mixing and mastering services, because I get asked about that an awful lot. Yes, I am a professional mix and mastering engineer, and I do offer services. You can head over to visionrecordingstudios.com and check that out. And I also offer one-on-one -on -one Skype training. You can check that out um, as well on visionrecordingstudios.com. Until next time with another video, this has been David with homerecordingmadeeasy.com, and I will speak to you guys all soon. Take care.